Nicole starts spending time with her patient, Major Daniel Ross. Their love for serving military families unites them. Nicole also tries to solve the mystery of what happened to her grandfather. Nicole helps her parents decorate the house for Christmas. Her mother, Fran, thinks the lights look perfect. Nicole has learned a special trick from her father, Ted. Nicole finished med school a long time ago, and Ted loves calling her a doctor because he's proud of her. Fran is taking up a lot of extra volunteer work, even if Ted keeps asking her to slow down. She likes staying busy and reminds Nicole she will be at the hospital. Nicole already knows Fran is their most faithful candy striper. She has also made Ted's favorite peppermint by Scotty. Ted thinks it's time to put up their first ornament on the tree. Fran knows this first Christmas without her mother is hard because it was her favorite time of the year. Nicole hangs the ornament with the photo of her grandparents and Fran wishes her parents had more Christmases with each other. Marilyn has kept an extra Santa hat for Nicole because she knows how busy she gets. Marilyn thinks Nicole's first patient is very cute. Nicole reminds her to stop trying to set her up. She also can't date patients, but Marilyn thinks he won't be a patient for long. Nicole gets flustered when she comes to see Major Daniel Ross. She forgets her own name and claims she was just immersed in his chart. Daniel is there after a knee injury while playing basketball. His friends forced him to come to the hospital, even if he thinks it's fine. He hasn't seen Nicole there before, and she claims she's in the reserves. He explains that he pivoted too quickly when he took a pass, and is sure it doesn't hurt. He loves her Santa hat, and asks if she's married. He knows he's being a little forward, but doesn't think it's illegal. Nicole has found some swelling on his knee, so she recommends scheduling an MRI. He only agrees for the MRI if she has coffee with him that afternoon. They joke about him blackmailing her, but she agrees to join him as a doctor and a friend. Daniel is still sure he can flirt with her once his MRI results come out clear and he's no longer her patient. Nicole discusses Daniel with Fran and feels he is too cocky and sure of himself. Nicole knows Fran is about to meddle and is already getting her hopes up about Nicole dating someone. Fran realizes she knows Daniel from a charity he volunteers at with her. He heads a hand for Warriors Charity, which works with injured veterans to help them rebuild their lives. Fran knows that Daniel established their local chapter, and she really likes him. She also points out that he's single, but Nicole reminds her she's not looking for a relationship. Captain Mark asks Daniel if it's okay for him to be climbing with his knee injury. Daniel assures him he's fine and informs him about getting hot cocoa with Nicole. He thinks it was the right thing to ask her out, since she's very charming and beautiful. Mark is excited about him meeting someone special. He thinks if Nicole is anything like her mother, Daniel has lucked out. Marilyn teases Nicole about fixing her makeup and liking Daniel. Nicole's next patient is Mr. Joe Morton, who is one of the last surviving World War II veterans. Nicole is happy to see him and his wife, Millie. She already has some ideas to help his hip. Millie is hoping he will take her to ballroom dancing classes. They have been married for 76 years, and he promised these classes to her at their honeymoon. Joe points out that he was a great dancer in his younger days and attracted some French women in the war. He met Millie after the war and knew she was the only dance partner he wants for the rest of his life. Nicole loves their story and hopes her grandmother could have gotten this chance too. She explains that her grandfather served in World War II like Joe and was slayed in Italy just before Christmas. Daniel has already ordered Churtsma's theme cocoa for them. Nicole is grateful for the warm cocoa because it gets so chilly outside. They both love it when it snows on Christmas. He laughs when she gets cream all over her face and he drinks his cocoa to match her. She knows Fran must have given Daniel her number and discusses the charity they work for. Daniel feels Fran is a great help 
since she has a lot of passion for helping veterans. Daniel is the fourth generation of his military family and thinks it's in his blood. He informs Nicole about an open house at the center the next day and asks her to come by. Nicole doesn't like how flustered she gets in front of Daniel. She notices some cookies and learns they're for the open house where Daniel invited her. She takes out a box where her grandma, Dorothy, kept her memories of her grandfather, John T. Medlin. She informs Fran about meeting Joe and Millie that day. Fran knows Joe from the center and thinks he's a great man. John was only 20 years old and a new father when he perished. He didn't even get to see Fran, but she knows from his letters that he was excited to meet her. They find a photo that was taken before his last trip. He promised to build a new house for Dorothy when he came back. Nicole remembers how Fran asked her to not mention John's demise, so they don't upset Dorothy. They only know he was slayed in a battle in northern Italy. The company was ambushed, and there were very few survivors. They find John's last letter, where he has described how beautiful Italian villages are despite the war. He also mentions that he wants to come back to his family. Dorothy always claimed he perished a hero. Fran has also kept the deed to the house in the box. The government gave Dorothy a lot of money when John was slayed. She used that money to build the house they're in and raise Fran. He kind of kept his promise to her, and Fran still feels their presence in the house. Nicole wants to find out more about his demise. Fran agrees, admitting even she is curious, and Nicole thinks it'll be the perfect present for their family. Nicole meets Daniel to ask for his advice about John. She only knows that he perished in 1944 before Christmas in Northern Italy. Nicole mentions how Dorothy never remarried because she felt lucky enough to marry the love of her life once. Nicole thinks knowing more about John after Dorothy has passed away will help Fran a lot. She has poured herself into work, but Nicole knows it's because she's hurting. Daniel is happy to help and plays basketball with a guy who works at the casualty office. He thinks they can find out more from there. Nicole seems nervous about Daniel meeting her dad at the center. But Daniel claims he's great with dads. Ted wants to meet Daniel too, because he has noticed a twinkle in Fran's eyes. She introduces them, and Daniel compliments Ted for raising a great daughter. Ted wants to have a chat with Daniel, but Nicole asks Ted to help Fran. Fran asks what Ted thinks of Daniel, and he feels he's great. But he asks Fran to stop trying to set Nicole up with someone. He wants Nicole to be with someone she likes in her own time. Daniel explains that all struggling soldiers and veterans come to them, and they help their reintegration into their communities. They offer services like therapy, financial aid, or even help with groceries and clothes. Nicole feels it's an honorable mission, but Daniel thinks they're just getting started. Mark guesses from the look on Daniel's face that he is with Nicole. Mark asks for Nicole's thoughts on their facility. She thinks they're doing important work, and Mark credits Dean for that. Mark explains that they started the facility after he came back from an overseas tour. He was in a vehicle crash after an explosion and almost kicked the bucket. Mark had a stroke which shattered his life, and he didn't think he will recover. He thanks Daniel for getting him back on his feet and claims he's almost normal now. After his experience, he realized none of his military comrades should go through this alone. Mark and Daniel wanted to help and look out for such people. This is when they started the center. Daniel explains that they're trying to raise money for a residential rehab facility on the land next to the center. They don't have enough funds and are running out of time. The man who owns the land has been patient with them, but he has other interested buyers Nicole has understood them enough to know they won't give up easily. Daniel asks Nicole for a drink, but she gets flustered and forgets her words again. Nicole invites Daniel for a small Christmas gathering her parents are hosting. He was supposed to hang out with Mark, so she asks him to bring Mark along too. But they have a rule of wearing fun Christmas sweaters, 
which Mark and Daniel follow well. Fran comments on how pretty Marilyn looks and asks for Mark's opinion. Nicole knows she's matchmaking again and asks Fran to explain their tradition. Dorothy loved Christmas, and it was a way for her to celebrate her husband. They had been married for just over a year and Fran had just been born. But Dorothy was always a strong woman of faith. To celebrate Christmas with joy, she started these spirit sweater holiday parties. She always felt these sweaters could express their own unique Christmas spirit. Fran claims they usually go around the room and ask everyone why their sweater represents the best of Christmas spirit to them. Before they start, Fran asks Marilyn and Mark to get eggnog and cookies from the kitchen. Mark has finally noticed Fran is trying to set him up with Marilyn. She knows about it too, because Nicole already warned her. Mark points out that they're sidekicks, so they're mostly rooting for Daniel and Nicole. Marilyn has noticed something between them too. She points out how funny it will be if the sidekicks get together too, like a rom-com. Mark nervously discusses how weird it would be for them to develop feelings for each other. Fran comes to help them out and encourages them to keep discussing whatever they were. Fran asks Daniel to sit with Nicole and Mark with Marilyn. Ted thinks they can choose their seats, but neither of the men mind. Ted breaks the ice and explains that the turkey on his sweater is named after him. He points out how an army marches on its stomach and claims Christmas does too. He feels sharing traditional food and drinks with family and friends is the epitome of Christmas spirit to him. He says this every year, and he claims he loves eating every year too. Marilyn shows everyone her sweater next and claims Christmas is about innocence and pure joy for her. She has witnessed that in her nieces and nephews faces. Mark claims he is a goofy guy and the reindeer on his sweater shows how he felt about Christmas as a kid. He thinks Christmas is about imagination and fun and believing that reindeers can fly. This belief helped him get through some hard times and makes good times even more fun. Fran chose the Christmas wreath because family and unity is important to her. She feels the circle also includes people who are no longer with them. Daniel's feelings about Christmas were shaped while growing up in a military family. But Christmas to him is more about giving and sacrificing for others just like Jesus did. Nicole grew up wondering why everyone put a star on top of the tree. She realizes now that the star guides the way and allows people to follow God. She thinks of it as a beacon of hope. Nicole is working early the next day because she needs to run an errand with Daniel. Marilyn thanks her for including her in the celebrations. She doesn't even mind Fran's matchmaking because she is warming up to Mark but she reminds Nicole about her next young patient. Private Landon Southworth is dealing with some lingering shoulder issues. His vitals are good, but his BP is high. Landon explains that he was thrown from a vehicle and landed on his shoulder. He starts panicking while explaining, so Nicole does her best to calm him down. Landon explains that he lost a close friend that day. He has been dealing with trauma since that incident a few weeks ago. He has a wife and a daughter who is very excited about Christmas. He wants to be there for them, but keeps panicking. He hasn't received any therapy or counseling. Money is tight, and he needs to ensure his family has a great Christmas. Nicole assures him she will fix up his shoulder and get him the help he needs. She informs Landon about Daniel's organization which can help him. Nicole prepares to see Daniel so they can find out what happened to her grandfather. They're also meeting Landon at Daniel's center that night. Marilyn is also glad because she feels someone like Landon needs all their help. She informs Nicole about a charity she started volunteering for, Santa's Helper. Her friend at the gym, Belinda, is the director at the charity. They provide toys and books for military families going through financial hardships. She suggests Landon can get gifts from there. Marilyn knows if Daniel or Mark refer him. Landon will get an appointment to pick the toys he likes. 
she asks Nicole to talk to Mark about this so she can coordinate with him. Sergeant Ray Bates, who doesn't like Daniel defeating him on the basketball court, is glad to help Nicole. Ray explains that a lot of World War II Army personnel records were lost in a fire in 1973. He has tracked down Nicole's grandfather's infantry company major, but he knows there aren't many present-day survivors. Most of his fellows were ended in battle, and the others have also passed since then. Ray is still determined to keep looking. He claims to have good connections at the National Archives. He asks for more time, and Nicole thanks him for being so amazing. Mark notices Daniel smirking at him as they make their way to meet Landon. Daniel explains that he needs Mark to coordinate with Marilyn so they can help Landon with gifts. Mark and Daniel instantly make Landon feel at ease. Nicole assures Landon that they will help him get everything he deserves. Mark has been where Landon is and knows he is hesitant. Landon feels grateful for all their help, and Mark shows him around. The next morning, Nicole thinks the smock looks great on Daniel. His official MRI results will be back in a few days, but she pulled some strings and found out that his knee is fine. She still asks him to take it easy and allow the knee to fully recover. She wants to schedule a follow-up appointment with her colleague, Dr. Reynolds, in a few weeks. She claims she can't be his doctor, since she might have a conflict of interest. Daniel gets a voicemail from Ray, so Nicole asks him to get dressed and inform her about it. Ray has found out that John's infantry company joined forces with an army mountain company briefly before his demise. There are two surviving members from this company, one of whom lives in Portland. Christian Murray has also agreed to meet them that afternoon itself. Nicole doesn't want to waste time either and agrees to head out. Daniel also decides to clear out his schedule for that day. While Marilyn offers to get Dr. Reynolds to cover for Nicole, the road trip starts with car snacks and Daniel teasing Nicole about cleaning out the convenience store. Daniel learns that Nicole has not been in a serious relationship for a while. When she decided to become a doctor, she realized her time for dating is very limited. Daniel claims his life as a military man forces him to be stationed all over the place. It's very unpredictable, and he hasn't found anyone because of it. Nicole discusses how her grandmother knew John was the one, even if they stayed apart. Daniel claims he's probably single because he hasn't met the right person till now. He asks about her future plans, and she discusses how she's eyeing an orthopedic practice in Olympia. She was thinking about moving there, but is not very sure now. They arrive at Christian's house. Ray has already told him a little about why they have come. Christian started a commercial shipping company, which his son, Joseph, handles now. He has retired and asks Nicole for some details about her grandfather. Nicole shares his name and when he was eliminated. Christian remembers the Italians had surrendered by then, but the Germans started showing their presence. Joseph joins them with tea and cookies form his mom's recipe. They lost her three years ago and miss how she was the rock of the family. Nicole claims her grandmother, Dorothy, was like that too. Nicole only knows John perished in December 1944 and has no idea of the details. Joseph knows this story well and explains that it's hard for Christian to repeat it. Joseph explains that Christian's company met John's company in the mountains. They were getting hit by German snipers and had to move quickly. Christian got shot and was injured badly. He was left behind by his company but a soldier from John's company spotted him. He asked his squad to leave without him so he could help Christian get to a farmhouse. Christian explains that the soldier stayed with him till he was stable and could be transported home. Christian is in awe of how that soldier risked his life traveling alone to get back to his company. They learned that the whole company was wiped out in a battle soon after that. Joseph thinks her grandfather must have expired in that battle too. Christian explains that the medications were so strong that he didn't even get the corporal's name. 
Nicole realizes John was a corporal then and shows Christian a photo of him. Christian tears up and recognizes John as the man who saved him all those years ago. Landon brings his wife, Louisa, to meet Mark. Landon remembers Mark being very excited to meet Marilyn again, but he pretends to be casual about it. Mark asks Louisa if her daughter, Layla, likes reindeer. He loves them too and gets excited like a child. Jaspe thanks Nicole and Daniel for helping his dad find out the name of the man who helped him. Nicole offers to visit again, and Joseph thinks that would mean a lot to Christian. Joseph did some online research about Daniel and is very impressed with the work he's doing at a hand for warriors. Daniel explains that they are trying to raise funds for the rehab center. Joseph claims that's very noble work. Nicole comes by the house when Ted is out for a walk. She claims she wanted to discuss something with Fran first. Fran gets excited about the possibility of Nicole marrying Daniel. Nicole claims they're only getting to know each other, but thinks Fran can keep hoping because she likes him a lot. Nicole returns the photo of John and claims she finally has a story to tell her. Daniel recalls the look on Nicole's face when she realized her grandfather helped Christian. Mark thinks the look on Daniel's face is better and is sure he's in love. Mark also admits he likes Marilyn and they have decided to hang out and see where it goes. He asks Daniel to not screw things up with Nicole because he's sure she's very good for him. He also thinks Daniel is good for her and they're both surprised he complimented him. Ted is impressed with the story Nicole shared and thanks her for finding out so much about her grandfather. She wants them to meet Christian one day and Fran knows that will be very special. They all come out to attend an event to honor the military at Christmas. They bump into Landon, who is also attending with his wife and daughter. Mark comes to them with Marilyn and she promises him treats because Daniel thinks he's like a puppy. Nicole assures Fran she is ready for this, and they watch as Joe begins his speech as a proudest Army veteran. He explains that their town of Lacey honors service members with a special lights display every year. This year, he is dedicating it to Corporal John T. Medlin. He switches on the lights, and they all watch as all service personnel get honored. Nicole and Daniel are out on their first double date with Mark and Marilyn. Mark has ordered a funky drink with a little bit of everything. As Daniel steps aside to take a call, Nicole asks about their plans for Christmas. Both their families are out of town, so they have decided to hang out with each other. Nicole shares that Daniel is coming over to her parents' house. Mark thinks it's great since he doesn't get to see his folks at Christmas. Nicole notices that Daniel looks stressed and asks him about it. He claims everything is fine and wants to order. Ray has invited them to discuss something important. Nicole hugs him, thanking him for all his help. And Ray explains he has something to tell and ask them. After the meeting, they both can't believe what Ray just told them. Nicole asks if it's related to Daniel's call at the diner. Daniel explains that his commander called to inform him that he's getting transferred in March. He had no idea but Nicole understands that is military life and thinks she should go. He wonders what will happen to them and asks if he shouldn't come to her parents' place. She asks him to come anyway since it's Christmas, as they make cranberry sauce. Fran can tell something is wrong with Nicole. She knows Daniel and Nicole have a surprise for her, but claims she doesn't need anything. She also knows that's not related to why Nicole is stressed and urges her to discuss it. Nicole informs Fran about his transfer, but Fran doesn't think that means the end of their story. Nicole feels military life is like that, and he will have to keep moving around to serve people. She feels maybe people like them don't get to have a happy life. Fran doesn't believe that, but Nicole is worried and doesn't want this to ruin Christmas. Fran decides to meddle again and covers the butter on the table. She asks Nicole to head out to get some butter alone and take her keys. Fran asks Daniel for help in the kitchen, 
and wonders if Nicole told him about how this house was built. She explains how John unintentionally fulfilled his promise to Dorothy and helped her build this house. Fran claims she misses the sparkle in Dorothy's eyes whenever she talked about John. She claims it was love at first sight and goes on about how love continues to grow with age. Daniel understands from her speech that Nicole must have told her about his transfer. Fran admits she has a reputation as a matchmaker, but claims she's not interfering this time. But she still wants Daniel to know that Nicole has waited her whole life for someone like him. She feels that's the case with him too. She feels some people only have a short time together like her parents. She points out how love needs sacrifices. She reminds him that even if Dorothy didn't have much time with John, she wouldn't trade it for anything else. Nicole is back from her false butter run and knows it was Fran's strategy. She wants Daniel to know she understands they have to be apart and doesn't want him to worry. Daniel claims he's not worried because he's not taking the transfer. Daniel has been thinking about this a lot and feels Nicole is wrong about how he needs to go. She feels Fran talked him into this, but Daniel knows Fran only made him realize what he already knew. He knows he has been searching for Nicole his whole life. He knew it from the moment she walked into the exam room for the first time. Daniel explains that he has been thinking about switching from active duty to army reserves anyway for a while. She doesn't think he should make big decisions for her. But Daniel claims he needs this flexibility and free time. He thinks he can stay back and work on his center, which has been taking up a lot of his time. His commanding officer was also very supportive when he rejected the transfer. He knows he's taking this step because of her and thinks they deserve a chance. They kiss in front of the ornament of her grandparents. Fran and Ted are happy about Nicole and Daniel. Fran has a great feeling about this, and Ted agrees with her matchmaking for once too. Nicole calls her parents to the hall to introduce them to Christian and Joseph. They want to show her something for her surprise, and they all head out. As a lot of people gather, Christian talks about how Fran's father, John, was a great hero. All the people gathered are in different generations of his family, and they all want to honor Fran's family for how John helped Christian. Daniel explains that when Joseph heard they need additional funding to buy the land for their rehab, they contributed all the funds that were needed. Christian shows Fran that he has named this facility after her parents. She inaugurates it with Ted and feels Dorothy and John would have loved to see this. Nicole also feels they must be up in the stars celebrating all the Christmases they missed. 